yeah, yeah, man, it's Monday. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's Monday, baby. It's Monday in Southern California. 84 degrees where I'm at in an undisclosed location in Southern California, man. You couldn't have the better kind of weather in all the nation. Woo! That's what we love about Southern California is the weather is so darn beautiful. You got the Pacific Blue Ocean on one side. You got the beautiful Los Angeles and San Gabriel Mountains on one side with a little snow up there on top. You've got, uh, of course, all the great things to do and see here in Southern California every day of the week. There's something going on night and day and morning and afternoon. It's unbelievable. Just the activity that goes on in this crazy town of 13 million people. You've got something happening on every corner. And, man, I'm telling you, it is a great place to kind of hang out at, but it's uh, getting more and more difficult for me, Jesse T., to live in because it's just getting too crowded and just too much, too much, just too much of the negative stuff. You know what I'm saying? Homelessness and trash buildup and pothole streets and and uh, it, it's just it's just the the filth and the stench and the dirt is just unbelievable. And yet you can travel ten blocks in the next direction and you are in mansions that are twenty thousand square feet, one hundred and twenty thousand square feet. And, the beautiful people are there, yes. The beautiful people. Hmm. Well, I'm going to teach you how to become one of those beautiful people today because <clears throat> the only way to super wealth in this country for people like you and me, if we aren't born with a silver spoon in our mouths, the only way is to win the California lottery. Now, that's one in what? A billion chances you might get that or some crazy number. The next way is to knock off one of your rich uncles uh, you know, like poison them like the Jesuits used to poison everybody when they didn't want them around. And, uh, and maybe you'll inherit some money. Well, that's the other way. The other way is just to be a good a good Samaritan in your family. Maybe you'll inherit some money from someone you don't even know. Maybe you'll find a million dollars in a brown paper bag sitting on Skid Row. I don't know. Maybe, just maybe, you'll work 60 years of your life and just live off your pension and Social Security. I don't know. Maybe, just maybe, you might hit a big in the stock market where 97% of all regular traders lose and only the big corporations win because it's rigged for the big corporations. The stock market is not an indicator of how regular folks are doing in this country. It's an only indicator of how the corporations are trading every single day. That's really all the stock market is. And we get lost in that because we think it's so uh, wonderful and great and terrific and awful and terrible and disgusting. But really, it's what the CEOs and the big corporations kind of look at every single day because they do all kinds of trades 24-7 now with this e-commerce. And it's really for them. We're lucky to make a little bit of money on that, if, unless you're in a 401k that with a real smart uh, manager of that 401k. So maybe you'll get it that way. Maybe you'll just find, strike some gold in them there hills of Hollywood, like the Beverly Hillbillies. Tell you a story about a man named Jed who was a poor mountaineer, but he kept standing fed. Then one day he was out shooting up some grub, and out came some bubbly crud. All oh, that is black gold, Texas tea. Well, the king folks said, Jed, move away from here. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So he loaded up the truck, and he moved to Beverly Hills. That is, fast cars, movie stars, and swimming pools. It's the Beverly Hillbillies. <laughs> maybe you just might do that. Or maybe you might strike your rich in the next Comstock load in California, Nevada, Utah, and dig for that silver, baby. Just dig and dig and dig. Oh, thank you very much, Lucy Gutierrez. Yes, I love that song. Or just maybe, just maybe, you just might move to Africa and become a gold miner. Yes, and you can enslave a whole public like Nigeria does. They enslave their whole public to mine for gold for the upper echelon elite wealthy of the world. Mm-hmm. Paying meager wages because they can. Hmm. I don't know. Well... If you're like me, you're not going to do any of that. If you're like me, you're going to work real hard 
save some money, take care of the family, take care of yourself, try to live a proper life, an honorable, ethical, moral life, and try to get up to a good standard of quality of life so your family can enjoy it and put your kids through college and take care of your family when they need your help. And even when they don't need your help, just shove it down their throat anyway because they need it. They don't even know they need it, especially the young ones. They don't know anything. Okay, so if you're like me, then the only road to wealth is through real estate. Now, I've been a real estate broker or trusted advisor for over 40 years here in Southern California. I've closed thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of transactions of all short shape, size. I'm like a shapeshifter, man. I've done it all. Man, I even sold a little island once. Well, participated in it at least. So, you know, if you're like me, you know, you got to do it the hard way. Now, I've been a loan officer for over 20 years, so basically my most of my money and most of my wealth and most of my real estate adventures have come from the knowledge that I ascertained coming out of college in business and communications way, 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 way back in 1982. I thought, hmm, I'm already doing real estate with my mom at 16 years old. She, had a red, she was a red carpet real estate agent, so I thought, well, this is kind of cool, so hey, that's what we did. We got real estate. So I started investing and buying, investing, and buying, winning, 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 just like your president, Donald Trump, winning, 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 then losing, 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 then winning, 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 then losing, 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 then winning and losing, losing and winning, winning and losing, losing and winning, winning and losing, winning, woolly, woolly, Ah, yes, the ups and downs. Been through them all. Been to the top of the mountain, like Martin Luther King said. And the sewer pits of life. Yes, two times. Filed bankruptcy in 1994, Chapter 7. Not afraid to tell you. Got audited by the IRS in 2004. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've seen it. I've been there. And I've climbed back ah, rah, rah, like a saber-toothed tiger. Except you don't stop till you drop, if you take my mentality. You don't stop till you drop. Because when you drop, you got an eternity to drop. You only have a little, little time in your life to stop and to keep going. So you don't stop. So you keep going and keep going. And the best way to do this is buy some real estate, son. Y'all got to buy some real estate. That's what y'all got to do. Will Rogers said, buy dirt because God don't make it anymore. And that's right. Until we move off the planet and go to Mars and Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus. And I don't want anybody up my anus. Thank you very much. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. <laughs> I had enough people up my anus when I had a colonoscopy about uh, two months ago, man. Just got the results today. Just thought you'd like to know that. I'm clean. I got no pubs. I got no bumps. I got no nothing, man. It's clean. It's a clean track from the big intestine right down. I just thought you'd want to know. I'm sharing that with you. Hey, because I love you. I love you. I love you. Why am I looking so many? Why am I looking so many places? Because over here is Instagram Live, and we got to say to Holly Rebecca Landon. I think I got that right. Holly Rebecca Landon. Yes. Yeah, you got to flip it, baby. You got to do the flip flops. That's one way to make some money in real estate. But you got to time that right. And if you don't have any money, you got to go find OPM, other people's money. And sometimes other people don't have much trust or confidence in you. So sometimes it's hard to put that together. You know what I'm saying? So what you got to do is you got to buy something and get going. Even if it's not something you really want, you just got to get going. Got to get going on something. Anything. I mean, just buy something. Buy a condo out in Bakersfield. Get yourself going. In fact, I got one for sale. <laughs> yes. How did I bring that up? Boy, you like that bridge? Jesse T is smooth, isn't he? Jesse, Mr. Sold Torero, right here on Instagram Live, Jesse Torero, on YouTube as we build and build and build that world on YouTube. Ooh, every Monday, we're rolling down to the real estate corner, and that's where we're hanging out right now. And on Facebook.com, Facebook.com forward slash Jesse Torero. Got to say hi to a lot of people, so hold on a second, Rebecca, or, or Holly Rebecca. Hold on, got to say a lot of people over here, my, my pals over here. Hey, Instagram, you got to start getting going because Facebook's kicking your butt, man. They're like whooping you. I'm putting money down on Facebook, man. They're like, they're like you know, boom, 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 boom. Instagram, what's wrong with you? YouTube, it's all right. You're just starting out with us, okay? Hey, saying hi to uh, Mocha Lana Sirga. Man, that sounds like a drink. 
Oh, yeah. Hey, what's up, buddy? Mocha or Mo Moch Lana Seergar. Moch Lana Seergar. Moch MLS. I'm just going to call you MLS like the Galaxy. MLS. Saying hi to Wendell Baker. Sometimes these names are really difficult for me, so if I really bastardize and screw your name up, I'm terribly sorry. I'm terribly sorry. You know, I have a hard enough time remembering my own name half the time. What's your name? I don't know. <laughs> Ward Benoit. Yeah, Ward Benoit's got us on. Thanks a lot, Ward. Michelle Lanelli's got us on. Thank you very much. Ken Gilbert's watching. Oh, yeah, where are you from? MLS, I am from Chicago originally, but we are living in Los Angeles, and I've been here for 55 of my 57 years. So basically, I'm a Southern California boy at heart. That's right, a little bit of Italian flavor, Spanish flavor. They got that Spanish, Italian, Italian, Spanish, you know, with a little Scott and Irish on the backside, you know? That's right. Okay. All right, so saying hi to, uh, who, else we, who else has got us on? Uh, we got uh, Noreen Marie. You know, that's great. I like it when you're named too first names as one name, like Noreen Marie. Yeah, I like that. Noreen Marie. I like that name. That's pretty. I once knew a girl named Maria. Her hair was like silk. Okay, so much for the singing. Jorge Rodriguez has us on down on the real estate corner today. No, I'm not the Four Seasons or a doo-wop band. Thank you much. Short sales are good, Holly. We're going to get to that real quick, but we're going to be talking about commercial real estate here. Commercial real estate is what's the topic of the matter today because I'm going to kind of give you guys a crash course in commercial real estate. Vanessa Smith and Bobby Bowden, Lucy Gutierrez, she loved that Beverly Hillbilly song. Arlene Lopez has us on. Thank you, Lucy. And saying hi to, I'm expressing yourself. That's right, Vanessa. Ah, oh, yeah. And Vanessa, hey, what about Kennedy? Oh, boy, those candidates are something else. I can tell stories all day about Kennedy's, but we're talking real estate right now. Vincent Martinez and Kennedy's made their money in illegal activity, bootlegging and wine, old man Ken, bootlegging and liquor. Old man Kennedy from Canada to the Al Capone and down down the East Coast to the Irish mobsters, okay? That's where he made his money. Hmm. That's why I don't worship the Kennedy's. Uh, Rose Cohen. Okay, saying hi to Rose Cohen. Okay, we got everybody saying hi to Howdy, hi, hi, ho, ho, ho. Hiya, 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 hi. How you doing? All right, so. I'm going to go over something real quick, okay? The real estate corner. we got a couple of websites I want you to check into. First off, three websites to help you make some money, all right? The first one is www.buy.jessetmrsold.com. The second website is www.seller.jessetmrsold.com. The third website is www.mrsold.jessetmrsold.com. Those three websites will get you started on your adventure. You got to sign up. It's all free. Got some free reports in there that will teach you what you need to know and get you on your way. And also I'll be able to get in touch with you and we can work out a plan and strategy and tactic for you. Yeah, I do have that property in Bakersfield for sale. Two bedroom, one bath condo. Just great. Somewhere between, no, I would say about seventy dollars and $80,000. Haven't priced it out yet. We're selling it. I'm fixing it up right now. Hey, it's right down from Cal State University, Bakersfield. It's gone up $45,000, $50,000, in the time that uh, I've owned it, or we've owned it, my partner and I, and we're selling it. We're liquidating it right now, okay? And so you can get your kids, they go to Cal State University, Bakersfield. There's three places you always want to be by. When you buy some investment property, keep this. I'm going to give you, a, this is a freebie from me, Jesse T, to you. Buy near military bases because you got some extra justice because if they screw up on the rent and mess the place up, you can go to their commander and he gets or she gets in a lot of trouble. And it's a never-ending, it's a never-ending flow of new people. Also, you also want to buy near universities, universities, okay? They've got a never-ending flow because mommy and daddy will pay that bill to keep their kids in school. So you got like a built-in thing going on there too, okay? And if you get fair pricing, good pricing, you're going to have an infinite number of renters all the time. They'll take care of the place because mommy and daddy are on the hook, okay? Got that? And the third place is anywhere where there is something that is used by the United States government. When I'm, when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about like near a federal building, near a... a uh, a hospital like the VA near um, uh, large uh, large federal outlets uh, like uh, 
offices for Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. A lot of these people, they rent, they live there, and they don't want to, you know, drive forever and ever and ever to get to work. So you buy around those things. You've got an infinite number of renters all the time. Undercut your rent just a little bit, and you'll never be without a tenant. So three good things there for you. And, uh, and uh, three tips there from Jesse T, okay? All right, so short sales, short sales, nah, not right now. There aren't any short sales, so there you go. Five, six, eight, ten years ago, there was a ton of them. I liquidated a lot of them, but not anymore. The banks are keeping the properties. They're not selling short because they know they can just hold on to it and then do a, key, a keys for exchange program, get the tenant or old owner out after they foreclose and sell it for a profit, get all their money back and sell it for a profit on top of what their money is, okay? So they're not doing that. Uh, foreclosures, REOs, auctions, this kind of stuff. You got cash, you can play. You don't got cash, it's real difficult. Okay, because that's where the cash buyers are flipping, flopping, flipping, flopping, flipping, flopping, like a tuna boat. Okay, flipping, flopping, flipping, flopping. If you don't know how to flip, then don't do it. You got to learn how to flip because there's a whole lot of stuff that goes involved in flipping, and that's called the cost of construction. Because usually when you buy something and you flip, you have something that needs a lot of work. So unless you know how to do that work yourself or willing to put the time in to learn or to do it yourself, then you're going to have to pay somebody to do it. And that's going to be a lot of money because they know that you want to flip it and they figure you got it for a cheap price. So they're going to charge you. Then you got to run roughshod over them with a bull whip. That's right. You got to whip some boys into shape. So you got a whole different beast to deal with there. So unless you know that game, and unless you know the construction game, the rehab game, you got to be real, real careful. Otherwise, you go over cost, over run. Plus, you have a mortgage payment to pay or a hard money loan if you go get some hard money, straight money. I uh, guess collateral that you have, uh, secondary property, and you get a hard money loan. You're going to have uh, interest payments, interest only. you got a balloon coming, so you can get yourself in trouble real fast. The best way to flip is come with cash. That's the best way. Best way to do it. And the best way to do it is to get something nobody else wants. Because if you get something everybody else wants, the price is just going to go up. Because right? there's not a lot of that on the market right now. So it's very competitive. That's why you get these seminars at night. They want you to join their education program. And you get these seminars at night. And they want to teach you, oh, you can use my money to buy. You can use my money. But you don't have to spend any of your money. Yeah, well, they got an army, a legion, a garrison. They got a brigade filled full of people just like you that pay a certain price to learn how to take their webinar course or their seminar course or their CD course. And they rip you off and take your money. That's where they're really making the money. And, and then you bring them properties. You drive around. They give you a formula. You drive and drive and drive and drive. You use a computer. Drive and drive. You find one or two. You pitch it to them. They don't like it. And so bang. But they got 400, 500, 600, 1,000, 10,000 people doing that for them already. So it's like, you know, how many drips does it take to dissolve a granite? A constant drip. So that's what they do. You're just a drip. A drip drop, a drip drop, a drip drop, a drip drop. Chances are you, it's like winning the California lottery. Chances of you getting that property that they will actually invest in. Yeah. And then they give you a piece of the action. Sometimes they cut you in for a percentage. Sometimes they just pay you a straight fee. That's how they do it. Okay? So there you go. I gave you the whole, the whole enchilada right there in about five minutes. Okay? That's simple. Okay? My goodness, ha! I should charge for this stuff. That's what I should do. I should charge for this stuff. Man, or elongate it and do my own webinar course, right? That would be a, a blast because I'd have so much fun on stage. I mean, we have improv. We have, it would be like going to a comedy class. Yeah, I have the singers come here. Ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah. I have the comedian come in, right? And I have the dancers do a little choreography dance. I come out, right? You know, do my little thing, do some scene sketch play, right? Oh, it would be great, man. It's like going to the theater. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Hmm. That's not a bad idea. Put together like a whole world vaudeville show built around teaching you how to become wealthy. Hmm. I think you and I got something going on here. Anybody want to invest in that show with me? Hey, man, let's do it. 818-805-4400. That's another way to get involved with us. And also at winwinwininc at yahoo.com and also at facebook.com forward slash jesse torero broker. That's me. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we got all that business out of the way and all that cool stuff, you know. Well, look at 
Uh, Holly, Holly, Rebecca, I think I answered a couple of questions already. Thanks a lot, Holly, for shooting them out at me. Holly, uh, she asked me, uh, where are you calling from, Holly? She asked me, uh, what's, which real estate is the best? Brokerage, commercial, multi-use, or industrial? Well, we're going to talk about uh, commercial. We're not going to, we're not, normally in the beginning of the show, what I do is I, uh, I, I tell us some good deals to buy, but I'm not going to do that today because we're talking commercial. And I want to I want to cover a lot of material in a short period of time because we only have uh, about 25 minutes left, and I had to, you know, do the classic Jesse T intro. Hey, I can't help but being me, Jesse T. But I want to cover this commercial stuff because commercial, think about it. When you're driving down the street and you pull into a 7-Eleven or a donut shop or your favorite sugar, your, your favorite sugar addict place because everything has sugar. I've cut the sugar out of my diet for four weeks now. Man, I am like an addict. I'm dying to have sugar. I am like, I'm like, I'm, I totally know what addiction is because I've cut the sugar out of my diet completely for four weeks. I had just as minimal amount. I don't have any bread. I don't have any, I don't have any, I don't have any milk anymore, man. I got no salt, man. I, I, I cut the sugar out. Ain't no sugar for Jesse. Ain't no sugar for Jesse. Jesse ain't getting no sugar anymore. No, no. Jesse wants some sugar so bad. Jesse wants sugar so bad. I'm like an addict. Please, somebody give me some sugar. I can't have any sugar. I want some sugar. You can't have any sugar. Oh, please, please, please. You can't have any sugar. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, I'll do anything for sugar. You are not allowed to have sugar. You understand me, man? Oh, God. A washy car. Please. No, I'm not a psychopath with split personalities. I'm not. <laughs> this is my real estate show. And believe me, I do my business like this. Can you imagine that? <laughs> oh, I'm not your stuffy guy, you know. A lot of people ask me, what's that pin that you wear? Okay, I'm, this is the last thing I'm going to talk about, okay? No, it's okay. You ask me as many questions as you want, Holly, Rebecca, Landon. I don't care. Um, we're going to cover that last... Uh, uh, we're going to cover that... We're going to cover, we're going to, yes, thank you, yeah, thank you, okay, thank you very much, yes, we're going to cover, talk to the hand, would you speak straight, okay, all right, we're going to cover this, okay, people that, well, what's that pin you always wear, well, I am a 32nd degree Scottish Rite Freemason, knighted under the Knights of Templar, my lodge is San Fernando 343, uh, that's my home lodge, my home temple, San Fernando, 343. So I am a master mason. Ooh, 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 I know the secrets. Ooh, 32nd degree, huh? I got one more degree and I'm a 33rd. But, you know, I've been in, in uh, Masonic and masonry since I was 21 years old. So I'm one of those old timers. Yes. Ooh, you are the elite. The Illuminati. Ooh, 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 ooh. I am. I am the Illuminati. Yes, I am the Illuminati. Ah! <laughs> Freaking you out, aren't I? Okay. So let's talk commercial real estate. All right, commercial real estate is probably the most the least known to regular folks. Everybody knows how to buy a house. Now, I sell a lot of those. But commercial real estate has always been for people that have a little more knowledge. But commercial real estate is really the way to go. You want to get to buying some commercial real estate as fast as you could. And commercial real estate covers a lot of areas. It covers duplexes, multifamily units, industrial, warehouses. It covers some business opportunities. It covers, of course, retail. It covers industrial, land development. It covers a lot of things, commercial real estate, okay? It can even cover some agrarian stuff in commercial real estate because a lot of agricultural zone property you can sell retail, which means you've got some commercial aspects to it. So commercial real estate is really uh, all-encompassing. I mean, that, is, and everybody out there that drives by something that a big building is standing on or a little shopping mall knows that somebody out there owns it. And, you know, that's really the best way to go. So you want to graduate to that. All right, so people ask me all the time, well, what's the business like? You know, how's it today? How's it today? Well, of course, we are up and going. You know, rates are still pretty good. 
and uh, you can get good loans, all right? And we're going to talk a little bit about that. That's a whole topic unto itself, so we'll just touch bases on that. But one of the things that I wanted to go over was uh, kind of just what's the trends right now in commercial real estate? Because in commercial real estate, you really got to look at a lot more information when you decide what you want to do. All right, and you, cause you, if you make the wrong decisions, uh, you're going to be in some serious Dutch real fast because you're going to have nothing but vacancies in your in your in your complex, in your shopping mall, in your shopping center, in your office building, in your warehouse, uh, your in your land management commercial aspect. You're going to have a lot a lot of issues. Okay, commercial space is concentrated in large buildings, yet uh, most of the buildings are relatively small. Yeah, the large buildings are, are relatively small because they are well multi-level. That is, you know, you got three, four, five, six, eight, ten floors. But uh, according to the uh, Energy Information Administration of Washington D.C., United States of America, about 70 percent of commercial buildings are less than 10,000 square feet. A lot of people don't realize they aren't. These just monster properties. These malls and stuff are going out of business. The big box, uh, the big box places are. Or that's over with, guys. It's over with. You understand what I'm saying? The big boxes are over with. They're done. They're gone. Amazon putting them out of business. eBay putting them out of business. Online uh, retail putting them out of business. It's going out of business. The Generation X and Millennials and the next generation, I think they're calling them the Y generation, the ones that are born right now at this moment, they are not going to go to the big box store. Why should they? When it can be delivered to their house and they have the same kind of return uh, uh, opportunities if it doesn't work and they're doing food now and they're doing medicine and they're doing all kinds of gadgets and tools and you can even buy a car and have it delivered out front to you. Don't forget about CarMax. You can have Carvan. There's another one. They'll, they'll finance your car right online. Uh, check you out in one fill swap and now you pick from the cars and then deliver it to your house and there you go. Bang. See? Bada bing, bada boom. That's what's happening. So you can, the big box stores are dead. They're gone and they're dying. They're dying all across, all across the nation. The big malls are dying and they're closing up everywhere. And the only way a big mall can survive now is to have something that's called an amusement park within the mall. Okay, They have to have an experience. If they aren't a mall that doesn't have an experience when you bring your family out there, then they're going to die a miserable, horrible death. Okay, and that's what's going to happen. So places like here in Los Angeles, in Glendale, there's a place called the Americana. There's a place called um, the uh, Farmer's Market. These are all big, huge so commercial buildings where you can buy anything you want, but they have experience. They have bands, they got waterfalls, they got ducks, they got kids and clowns, they got kids stuff for the kids, stuff for the adults, they got outside reading areas, they got... It's, it's an experience that you go to, okay? So that stuff is... Unless it's going to go that route. But, you know, most people aren't going to buy that anyway because it takes hundreds of millions of dollars to, one, get it and develop it. All right? So, most of the commercial real estate that people buy are going to be these little corner shopping malls. And that is where it's at. you got to go local, 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 local. Now, that's not <laughs> That's not crazy. No, that's local. L-O-C-A-L. Not L-O. Not... <laughs> not crazy loco like in Spanish. Es muy loco. Es, no, 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 no. Okay? Okay? It's local. If you have a local little shopping center, maybe with an anchor like a 7-Eleven or an anchor like a donut place or a, a small little anchor like that, maybe a McDonald's or Jack in a Box, that's your anchor, or something like that, fast food restaurant, never goes out of business and you have local shopping around there and you're going to have a lot of people come and go, but you're going to be able to support your mortgage payment, make some money, and the value goes up as long as you keep it clean, nice, and you don't allow these people to destroy your property. And the beautiful thing about commercial real estate is that you can evict people after 30 days they don't pay. You have the right to lock them out, man. Chain it up, lock it out, take their stuff, move it out the back door, and release it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Real fast, not like a house. Okay? So... Commercial localization is what it's called. You localize your commercial into small little corner lots, small little buildings. That's the key right now. And then you hit the marketplace where your local entity is, resides at and you market uh, to the people living in that general area. So you have to, one, do some research on the area to see the kind of people that are living, how much money they have. Um, where they come from, what they do, what the language, their ethnicity, everything, because you have to localize your merchants in there to cater to those people. So if you live in an area like, and I'm going to be straightforward, because Jesse T is always straightforward. If you're going to live in an area like Del Mar, or I mean like um, Long Beach, there's a place called, uh, it'll come to me in a second, where most of 
and that's a very large concentration of uh, alternative lifestyles there, then you want to make sure that you understand that your local shopping center is going to cater to people of alternative lifestyles. Now, that, cater to, that means that you can cater to them. They buy Subway sandwiches too. But you also want to make sure that that they have things that are very specialized for them, okay? So you have to understand that, okay? If you're in a Spanish-speaking area, you want to make sure you have local businesses that cater to uh, the authenticity of, of uh, that speak Spanish. If you have an African-American area, you want to make sure you have localization there, too, as well. If you're in a uh, Caucasian area, you want to make sure you have localization there. You have to keep things local, targeting the area that you're buying in so that you can maximize the rents and pay for your mortgage and have the value of the property go up. Does that make sense? That's one of the first rules. Research, research, research is what it's all about. Okay? So, um, another thing that you have to think about in terms of commercial real estate is uh, what are the trends? What are the, where are the trends going right now? Well, we have low unemployment and we have uh, increasing labor force uh, a greater increase in labor force than we've had in a long time today. So that means people got more money to spend. Okay, that's really that simple. They got more money to spend. All right? That's it. So uh, where are they going to spend it? They're going to spend it online. And if you have something local, it's easy for them to go there and get it. They're going to spend it there. If they got to travel today, people won't go. Okay? They don't want to leave their house, man. They're working like 100 hours a week. And they want stuff brought to them. So let's go back to the old school. Old school is like, remember the Helms Bakery truck here in Southern California used to deliver the bakery good items right to your front doorstep? Bring, bring, bring. Helms, man, Helms, man. Or we had Roger Jessup's dairy. He used to deliver our milk and cost cheese and yogurt and chocolate milk every single day. And we had good and plenty ice cream. We used to drop the ice cream off too. Uh, we'd have to be there to pick it up, otherwise it would melt, okay? So you had these kind of services that that localization provided, all right? So you think about that, all right? And that's very important because people don't want to leave once they get home, all right? The best return of investment right now, though, is industrial real estate. Industrial real estate is like warehouses where railroad spurs come into and big trucks drive out of. That's the industrial real estate right now across the nation. The best return on your investment right now is of 2017 in the last quarter. The best is industrial, 3.28% return on your investment every year. Retail was only 1.27. See how it's gone down? Apartments are 1.62. Offices are 1.65. National uh, and uh, national businesses like franchises and stuff are 1.8% return. Okay? Forget about the cap rate. The cap rate is uh, kind of a scientific formula. You don't have to worry about the cap rate. What you want to worry about is real simple. Let's make it easy for you, okay? The money coming in and the money going out. Do you have anything left at the end of the day? And what's the value of the dirt in the building? There you go. Cap rate comes from all of that. But really, that's all you got to think about. So you hear people talking about cap rate this and cap rate that. Man, look at it. The lower the cap rate, that, that market is, has basically capped off. They, they, the higher the cap rate, the better it is. That means there's more opportunity for you to make money. But the lower the cap rate, that means the, the market is kind of ceiling. Okay? Holly, Holly Rebecca says, absolutely. And, and with today's market, commercial is more difficult. Retailers are suffering from the advances in technology. That's true. But if you can get involved in the commercial market, you can. So SBA loans are increasing. SBA loans allow you to come with a very little down payment, maybe 10%. On a commercial loan, uh, the rates are a little bit higher. It's a little more fastidious on paperwork, but they will allow you to not only buy the, the property, they will, they will support your business. You can take a business loan as well as a property purchase loan or a rehab loan if you want to redo the property. So all that can be worked into an SBA loan. Also, there's agricultural department loans, too, that can be used in more rural areas as well. Okay? So... You want to think about that. Yes, conventional financing at banks are very difficult because the banks don't want to lend out the money as much as they are saying they do. And the reason is because they aren't sure what the Fed's going to do on the rate. We know the Fed is going to be raising the rate like they already did. Just a few, uh, I think they raised it 10, uh, 10 basis points. That's like uh, you know, 10%. 10 ba or I'm sorry, 10. They didn't raise, they didn't, I'm sorry, they didn't raise it 10. 0.1, 0.2 basis points. It's like one point. 
one and a quarter point, okay? So we know the Fed's going to raise the rate three to four times this year, at least three times. So by the end of the year, we'll probably be at one and a half percent, one per full percent higher than we are right now. So the banks are kind of easing up on, on lending and making it a little more difficult. But if you can qualify, they would, if the property qualifies, you have got a winning combination. Crowdfunding is a new source of financing for commercial, industrial, warehouse, that kind of purchasing, where you, others invest in your building and they get a piece of the action. So crowdfunding is something new. We'll see how that pans out over the, uh, over the coming years. It's something new that's, uh, that's kind of happening little by little by little, um, but it's, it's not full gap or full, full speed pedal to the metal yet. Office demand has softened. So if you're thinking of buying a big giant office complex or an office building, the demand has softened tremendously because, and here's why, outsourcing of office related businesses. A business has an office like, let's, let's give you an example, a bank. Called out on our Facebook over here. The reason why they did that, Bank of America liquidated about 40% of their employee base because they don't want to, they're tired of the real estate. They don't need to have all those employees in there. They got kiosks and everybody's doing banking online. So it's the same thing, hold steady. I mean, when you walk into the Bank of America, you know, there's, there's like, used to be like 12 tellers in some banks, the big, huge ones. Now there's like three and the kiosks are outside. So they really are pushing you towards that. And that's happening faster than you can blink your eyes. It's happening really quick. And so you want to understand that offices are the same way. The, having ten, a staff of 20 people now, one person can do what 20 people did with the software, and they can do it from home, and they, they, don't have to, they can be an independent contractor now, so now the company doesn't have to absorb their health, and doesn't have to absorb their 401k, doesn't have to do anything like that. So office demand is going down. Okay, and it's softened in the last quarter. Is it going to pick up? I don't know. But uh, the trend is that it's going down right now. So you got to be very careful when you buy office. Uh, one of the trends that are going up right now, of course, is anything medical related. So if you're going to buy an office, make sure it's got medicine all in it. Dentists, doctors, chiropractors, that kind of stuff. Because as the aging population of the baby boomers and the Generation X gets older and older and older, what's going to take place is they're going to have to have more doctors and more hospitals and all that crazy stuff. So you see, offices are going up. In fact, the trend right here, in fact, in fact, the best trend in terms of commercial real estate vacancy forecasts, when you start looking at what's vacant, retail is not office space. It blows, it blows me away. The most vacancy factors forecast for this year is office space at about 12.8%. So that means 12.8% of your office space is going to be vacant all the time. In retail, it's 11.8%. Multifamily, it, uh, industrial is 8.8%. Multifamily is 5.5%. See, multifamily is the way to go. That's the other place to buy duplex, triplex, fourplex, fiveplex, six, ten, twelve, one hundred, two hundred units because people can't afford or not pulling the trigger as much as they used to, waiting longer to buy, and and so consequently they need places to live. The population is growing, there's a whole lot of sex going on every day of the week. We got more people making more babies than ever before. The millennial generation is the largest generation, even bigger than the baby boom generation. A whole lot of whole lot of love making going on. That's right. A whole lot of Whole lot of love making going on. Need some love making music. That's right. Yeah, that's a whole lot of that going on. So a lot of babies are coming, and uh, yeah, really, huh? Yeah, okay. Anyway, so they gotta have some place to live. You see, that's why we have a housing shortage across America. Right across America, everywhere there's a housing shortage. That's why multifamily has the smallest uh, possibility of vacancy forecaster with this next year. So, if we look at this, and we look at this, we say, okay, what do we got going on? All right, well, we have multifamily being probably the best investment. Then we have commercial being probably the second investment. Um, in terms, I'm sorry, industrial being the second investment, warehouses. And then we have commercial, and then, then we have office space, okay, in that order. So, that's kind of the trends that are happening right now in our brief discussion about commercial real estate. So, hopefully I covered some topics there. I can't cover it all. There's so much more to talk about. 
I mean, it gets really in, in depth, but you got a good review right there and kind of got an idea of what's happening. And that's really what I wanted to give you today. Something along that line. Saying hi to Tony Novak. I wonder if this is a Tony Novak that was my partner in college when we were doing some shows. We did a we did a show with Billy Juggs. If this is that Tony Novak, say hi, Tony. Tell me that's you. I haven't talked to you in a gajillion years since I was in law school over at uh, Laverne School of Law behind your dad's gas station, the Chevron station there. I haven't talked to you, gosh. And uh, man, wow, crazy. Well, I'm not an attorney, but I, I did get done with this stuff. But, you know, I'm not an attorney. I'm not an attorney. I do not give counsel. No, 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 no. I'm a real estate broker and loan specialist. That's what I do. All right, so there you go. Down on the real estate corner. Oh, should I give you? Should I just do it? I wasn't going to do it, uh, but I, should I? Okay, I will. You convinced me. I'm going to give you some properties to buy, okay? I'm going to give you guys some properties to buy. Write this down, okay? I'm going to give you five of the, oh, the Valley Rock Shift. That is Tony Novak. Ha, <laughs> ha! Tony, baby! Tony! Tony, 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 Tony Novak! Tony Novak. Man, we used to spend many a night in Tiny Nailers after the Valley Rock Shift. We both programmed that five, seven-day-a-week rock show, alternative show, back in the early 80s. We got together, uh, and uh, two crazy guys, man. Tony is a completely different kind of personality than me. I'm like, you know, Jesse T. I'm in the place to be. I'm the brown beauty on duty. You know, what can I tell you? Jesse, Mr. Soul Terrero, that's me. And Tony was always reserved and smart. What a great writer he was and journalist. But um, he decided to go another direction in his career. And, and I think he's doing well. I think he's teaching now, if I'm right, Tony, right? Um, so, you know, there's no way I could teach in school there, you know, unless it was like, you know, warrior arts. Boom, 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 boom. Right? That's about the only thing I want to teach. <laughs> but anyhow... Uh, oh, yeah, I, I got sidetracked. Tony, you get me sidetracked, man. Yeah, Tony's laughing, man. He always used to laugh. And we spent many a night at Tiny Nailers drinking, sucking down strawberry shakes, man. I didn't like strawberry shakes before I met Tony, man. And, man, we were sucking down strawberry shakes. Remember that? Yeah, thanks, Tony, man. You know me, Jesse T. I just keep going, man. I'm, I'm like the Energizer Bunny Rabbit. Boom! I don't stop till I drop. That's right. That's right, baby. Okay, so look at guys. I'm gonna give you some real estate to buy. Okay, you know, you want you want to want to buy some cheap stuff. I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna give you some stuff. Right, I wasn't gonna do this today because we basically did an overview of commercial. But you know, you're pulling my leg. I can feel it. Give me my leg back. Now you're on my other leg. You're like a little puppy dog. You people, you. I love you. Okay, so uh, I got to put my special magic Jesse T code in. That's right. Jesse T has a back door to all the real estate in Southern California that's good priced. I'm telling you, you got to come to place to be. You know, if you want the cool information, give it to you straight like I give it. You know, I don't mess around. Uh, that's the one thing. I just kind of deliver it the way I deliver it. And, you know, that's the way it is. And the one thing you'll get from me, this is what I've always said. Uh, no, I just don't want you to see the top of my head that's going gray. I'm, I'm typing in some special stuff here. What's wrong with you people? That's right. I, I'm not going to give you my passcode. No. What are you talking about? Then you'll have the information and you'll cut me out of the mix. And then Mama T will get really mad at me because I won't be able to make any money. That's right. Okay, so let's log in here. I'm going to give you guys some properties to buy, okay? All right, so uh, I hope you're ready. I, I'm giving you a forewarning. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm only going to spend about 8, 10 minutes tops, okay? So I'm going to give you the best properties in the San Fernando Valley. Tony, remember the San Fernando Valley? My goodness. It is not the valley that it used to be. Oh, no. Let me tell you. Oh, man. We used to live behind Devonshire Downs. Oh, man. That's changed so much. Changed so much. Um... Okay, we'll do a quick little, quick little dash for cash right here. That's what we're going to do. Quick little dash for... Who else has a son? Deshaun has a son. Sergey Barriga has Rosie Cohen. I like that. All right, right. Vincent Martinez has a son. Thanks a lot. I'm sorry I didn't say hi to you guys. Carmen Lanos has a son. Jim Thompson. Jim Thomas is there. Yo, Jim Thomas. We're down on the real estate corner every Monday from 5 to 6. I'm, I'm hanging out overtime because... 
I got started a little bit late. Uh, but Jim Thomas has us on. Big, huge, huge event. Uh, check out last week's show on Wednesday. It's archived up. Big, huge event for for uh, martial arts happening, uh, coming up here in just a few short months. We're going to be posting up a lot of stuff. Jim Thomas, my guy. Uh, that's right, James. I went uh, through. I, I I've went through seminars. No use. I did it my way. Got lucky. We have sixty three properties. No reason to pay old school. Buy the way you need a Snickers bar. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can do it. There's lots of ways to do it. Uh, Mark Morales is watching. Alex Beverly Tebazano, Jeffrey Sowers, Dean Olson, Heather Hawes is watching. Heather Hawes is watching. Thanks, Heather. Yeah, the Dean Olson. Yeah, I said hi to Dean. Okay, all right, all right. So I'm gonna give you guys some some real estate to buy. Okay, this is a stuff that's on the market right now. Okay, and stuff that's in Los Angeles County, and uh, it's it's going to be residential real estate because a lot of you, uh, we talked a little bit about commercial in an overview, but a lot of you said uh, on your comments here, hey, come on, give us, give me some of those good price properties you do every day, every Monday at the beginning of your show. I said, okay, okay, all right already. I mean, gee whiz, give me some rice a or something. The San Francisco treat, rice a -roni. The San Francisco treat, rice a -roni. Something you want to eat, rice a -roni. The San Francisco treat. Uh, yeah, okay, here we go. All right, you ready? L.A. County. Let's look at some. Let's look at some properties to buy. Uh, let's look at something under two hundred thousand bucks. You say, Jesse T. There's nothing under two hundred thousand bucks. Yes, there is. I got one right here. You ready? I hope you're ready. Yeah, I hope you're ready. How about a two-bedroom, one-bath house for eighty-five thousand bucks? Wait, whoa, wait a minute. What did you just say, Jesse T? You said eighty-five thousand bucks in L.A. County. A two bedroom, one bath house for eighty five thousand bucks. You crazy? You crazy, man? You crazy? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm looking at it right here. Two bedroom, one bath, eight hundred square feet, eighty five thousand bucks, out in the out in the Palmdale area. Yeah. So what? So what? Eighty five thousand bucks. Hey, come on. You put three percent down on that. That's like twenty five hundred buying a car, right? You buy that car, right? And that car depreciates, and you end up crashing it because you had too much cannabis. Because <laughs> cannabis is legal now in the state of California. Okay. Not only we got to worry about drunk drivers, we got to worry about cannabis drivers. Pretty soon we're going to have to worry about cavemen doing cannabis and drinking. <laughs> if you don't know what that means, then I'm not going to explain it to you. Okay. All right, so... I miss those Geico commercials of the cavemen. I'm sorry, I do. <laughs> I really fell in love with the cavewoman. <laughs> okay. 19703 East Avenue G. 19703 East Avenue G. For you OG gangsters, we got you on the G Street. 19703 East Avenue G. Lancaster, two bedroom, one bath, 85,000 bucks. 2400 bucks, man. You're going to have a mortgage of, uh, of uh, let's see here, 7 times 8 is 56. Uh, you have about 6000 a year in mortgage payments, PMI, uh, interest, and insurance, and taxes. So divide 6 by 12. Hmm, what is that? Uh, let me see. 12 by 12 is 1000 a month. So 6 by 12 is $500 a month. You could rent that. I could rent that out right now for $900 a month. Right now. Forget it. I'm going to go buy that one. 19703 East Avenue G, through G in Lancaster. Okay, let's go find you another one. All right. You guys, you guys got me going now. I got to go buy one of these. Now, we're going to get expensive now, okay? We are going to get big time expensive. All right, this one, this one you're going to find very interesting because I'm going to tell you how to make money on this one. Okay? This bad puppy is sitting on 1.6 acres, 73,536 square feet of land in Palmdale. Okay? 
It's a one-bedroom, one-bath house with a one-car attached garage. You convert that to a garage into a, another bedroom with a master bath, master bedroom. You got a two-bedroom, two-bath house sitting on a 1.1 acre. They want a well, 1.6 acre. They want 179. You just made yourself 40 grand. You do it yourself, it costs you maybe 10. 7 to 10 grand to do that. You just made yourself 40 grand. You don't have to hook up to the sewer here. It's got a cesspool septic tank because you're more than 250 feet away from a sewer line. So you don't have to hook it up. There you go. Bang. Bada bing. Bada boom. Just did it for you. I think I'm going to go buy that one. My goodness. You say, Jesse T. Jesse T. That's too far away from me. I got to get closer. I don't want to go out there. Well, you're a silly fool if you don't want to buy a good price. It don't matter how where the real estate is look at. It. it don't matter where the real estate is. It matters what you pay for it. And can you make a profit? That's what it's all about. It's just business, man. It's not personal. Just business. Just business, man. Not personal. That's right. It's like the Godfather. It's just a business. Not personal. Okay. I'm going to give you two more. I'm going to bring you on into the San Fernando Valley now. Okay. You say, you say it's just a little too far out there for me. All right. No problem. I'm going to bring you into, I'm going to bring you into Los Angeles. And you say to me, oh, don't give me central Los Angeles. I said, why not? I just sold a house to Angel, his second house in 18 months. He scored second house in 18 months, brother. He was living in his RV. He was living in his RV down by the river. He lives in my RV down by the river. That was an old Saturday Night Live skit. Angel was living in his RV down by King Taco. Right, he was. Then he hooked up with me, Jesse T, got his first house. Then he hooked up with me, Jesse T, again, refied that house. Then he hooked up with me, Jesse T, again, and he got a second house. There you go, that simple. Bada bing, bada boom, just like that. He bought it in Compton. Compton, you say Compton. Oh, Crips and Bloods, no way. It's all Latino now. That's right. It's been regenderfied. It's Latino. That's right. It's been re racified, re demofied. Redemographified, re-ethnicified. I'm making up Toriel speak right now. I'm just making up words as I go. How about this? He bought it for three fifty. It's worth four twenty five the way it stands. He's gonna put ten, fifteen, twenty grand into it. He just got himself positive cash flow of equity in his pocket. He's already worth a quarter million dollars. Probably gonna be worth about three hundred and fifty thousand in equity. And he's got a positive cash flow coming out of it. Because that thing will rent at nineteen Nineteen twenty two thousand dollars a month. That's right. I'm not kidding you. Rents are all jacked up. But I got something better. In fact, I'm gonna call a few clients on this. You better get on this, guys. Now, I'm telling you. How about this? Give you the address. Nine five four seven. Nine five four seven. Nine to five or four seven, please. Nine to five or four seven. Nine five four seven. This is car nine five four seven. Here we go. Nine five four seven. I'm going to tell you all about it. It tried to get away from me. That's what it tried to do. Huh. Trying to play a little cat and mouse game with Jesse T. You can't do that. 9547 Los Angeles. Two bedroom, one bath. 750 square feet. 280,000 bucks with a one car garage. Same thing. I'm telling you, this place is clean. Wow. Man, 280? You put another bedroom on there? Another bathroom? I could, I could pop this out at 390 right now. Thank you very much. Yep, three ninety. Right now, you understand me? I gave it to you already. One more. Let's see if we can get into the valley. Okay, let's get into the San San Orle Pues, I say the San Fernando Valley. That's where we're gonna go. I grew up in the San Fernando Valley. All right, so all right, let's go here. Let's get real specific. Okay, how about West Hills? You like West Hills? You like Woodland Hills? I bet you do. Woodland Hills is nice. That's the west end of the valley. Yeah. You like that area? Okay. Let's see if we can find something in Woodland Hills. Let's see what we can find over there in Woodland Hills. If, unless I find something better on the way. And I'm just looking right now, real quick. Ah, I got something better. I have something better right here. The city of San Fernando. This one. This is a cool property, guys. Write it down. I'm giving it to you live. Ain't no jive right here. 1044 Hollister Street. 1044 Hollister Street. 
City of San Fernando, 315, two bedroom, one bath, 800 square foot, two car garage in front. Put a carport out there. You got a big master bedroom, master bath, and uh, you got now three bedrooms, two bathrooms, and uh, you've got uh, two car carport out front, and you can pop this thing right now, 475. You do that. I, I'll sell this for 475 all day long. Three bedroom, two bath at 315. You got it. I can get this out and pay the closing costs. Hey, here we go, guys. That's it for today. Here's my website. All right? www.mrsold.jessetmrsold.com. www.buy.jessetmrsold.com. www.seller dot jesse t mr sold dot com couple more facebook dot com forward slash jesse torero broker okay here's a number eight one eight eight zero five forty four hundred that's four four zero zero okay and here's last my email, W-I-N, 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 I-N-C at Yahoo.com. Why three wins? Because three wins build a triangle. When you win and you win, then I win. I have a chance to win too. So we all win. We build a trifecta. And a triangle always lands on the solid side with a point point of where you should be going. That's right. The where you should be going is to the light because the light is right. That's what it's all about. And Jesse T will get you there in the triangle, the power of three. You, you, and me. Boom! Baby, how can you get any better than that? There's no way in the world that you can get any better than that. <laughs>
Jeffrey Bezos, come on, man. What's wrong with you? You're worth billions and billions and billions of dollars. Why are you ripping off the publishing side of your Amazon clients, huh? Terrible. So James, they're going to be talking about that. We're popping the cork. We're blowing the scene. We are whistleblowing. And Jesse T's going to get it out there with James Stern tomorrow at 5 to 6. If you're a publisher or you want to be a publisher, we're going to give you the low down on Amazon. Boo! Yes! Also, we got a new thing coming up on Wednesday with Dan the Man. It's called Man on the Street with Jesse T. We're going to be rolling out there asking the questions of the day. Next week, actor Patrick Kilpatrick checking in. Possibly on Thursday, the Jolton J himself and actor Jeff Langton talking about how Hollywood screwed him over. Screwed him bad. Talking about the, the uh, perversity and the deviance of Hollywood. Oh yeah, he's going to lay it out, man. Lay names down. Jeff Langton going to be checking in. Right now, it's Justin T. I'm out of here. You have a great night. I'm going to go train now. It's time to hit the, hit the road and get ready for Spartan. The Brown Beauty is off duty. See ya!